Hi, welcome to my workshop here in the basement of my home in Manchester, England. Today I'm going to take some maple, I'm going to take some walnut, I'm going to glue the pieces together, we're going to make a cutting board for the kitchen. Don't go away. start to apply the glue. Move this piece back because that's not needed and flip every piece 90 degrees. Then bring the pieces back together, align the edges and start to apply the glue. I'm using Type Bond 2 which is a, a glue that's approved by the Food Standards Authority as being safe to use on products that come into contact with food. This is very important, you don't want to go out there and give a cutting board for Christmas gift and uh, you know actually poison somebody, that wouldn't be good would it? So what I'm doing here, I'm just applying a liberal amount of glue, you need a lot of it, there's going to be a lot of squeeze out but we'll sand that down afterwards when the glue's set. Spread the glue evenly, I'm just using my finger, you can use a brush, you can use a a card, you can use a piece of scrap wood, it's entirely up to you, but I like to use my finger. I've heard that you can get actual rollers that uh, fit on the, the end of the type bond uh, bottles of glue, and they're really handy. I've seen them on, uh, on many videos, certainly stopped me getting into a mess. If I can uh, only find out where I can buy one from, that would be handy. Make sure the glue spread evenly. You want an even, uh, an even bond between the pieces when you actually come to, to clamp the, uh, the board together. And there is going to be, like I said, a, a lot of squeeze out. But now I'll, uh, I'll sand that off when the glue's set up. But I will come back in about 20 minutes after I've uh, clamped it up and just take off any uh, excess squeeze out with a damp rag. Just saves a lot of sanding afterwards. Okay, flip them back 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bring this other piece back. Line them up as best you can. The clamps are going to move the pieces anyway, so you don't have to be too exact. And apply some clamping pressure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the centre and I'm going to work my way out. And believe me guys, when it comes to clamps, you can never have enough of them in your workshop. Keep applying pressure until you see glue squeeze out. Then you can apply the next clamp. I'm just using quick clamps. Bar clamps would have been easier and a lot quicker, but I don't have any, so you know you may do amend in this uh, this game of making cutting boards and doing woodworking as a hobby. Slide that up there. You can see I'm leaving maybe a half an inch in between each clamp and clamping the other side alternately. And as you can see, that's moved that board that way. So if I just slacken these off slightly, it will enable me 
to realign the board what it should do. There we go, that's a little bit better. Let's just tighten these clamps up once again. Do each side alternately and try to put even pressure on. I know it's, uh, it's a hard thing to do with these quick clamps. But I just go ahead and watch for the glue squeeze out. And as soon as it starts squeezing out top and bottom, I know I've got enough pressure and I've got an even clamp. Okay, as you can probably see, we've got an even squeeze out of glue on this edge, right over to this edge, and more or less the same on every piece, really. So I'm just going to let that set up overnight. We'll be back tomorrow. Well, it's been 24 hours since I glued the pieces up. I've taken them out of the clamps, off camera. I'm well pleased with the glue up. I did wipe the excess glue off with the damp cloth. All that's left to do now is take it over to the workbench, sand this face and sand this face until it's a smooth finish. Well, I'm here at the workbench. I'm about to start the sanding. I'm going to go through the grits from 80 grit to 120 grit. For safety purposes, I'll be wearing dust mask. I'll show you how I start the sanding process then I'll switch the camera off, I'll move the camera out of the way of all the dust and I'll come back to you after the sanding process has finished. Well I've finished the sanding now, both sides are nice and smooth, what I have to do now, take it over to the table saw, trim the edges nice and square. Ok, I'm here at the table saw, I'm about to true up the edges, I'll true this one edge up, then I'll turn the camera off, I'll do the other edge and I'll get back to you when both edges have been done. nice and square. The next thing to do, take it over to the router table and round off the edges. Okay, so I'm here at the router table. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the end grain first. It'll split out on the edges but the split out will be taken care of by the routing of the long grain. I'll make several passes on both sides, raising the router bit slightly each time until I get the radius that I want. When we've done that, we'll go over to the workbench and it'll be time for some finish.
both beginning to round over on the edges now. I'm going to do the rest off camera just to stop okay. you getting bored. Finish rounding over the corners and the edges. I've given it a light sanding on the uh, on the workbench just to take off any any rough edges that were left by uh, a blunt route of it. Now it's time for some finish. Just like the gluing up process, the finish you use has to be food safe too. You can use uh, tongue oil, use mineral oil, or use uh, chopping board oil that I'm going to use. Uh, please don't use vegetable oil, olive oil, or even rapeseed oil because. Well, it makes the board look nice, it does get into the cracks, and over time it does go rancid. Let's apply some oil and watch the grain pop up to this. Take some paper towel and just rub it in. Oh boy, look at that. If several thin coats is better than one thick coat, it soaks in quicker. Do the top edge first, or the top side first, make sure I'm getting into all those little gaps. You can see where the grain's kind of uh, opened up with the sanding, because there's uh, little white spots. So the first side done, I'm going to wipe down the edges. A little bit more oil on the towel. Not quite getting there with the uh, with the edges. Hmm. Thought he may have soaked into the edge, the uh, end grain a little bit quicker than this actually. And there we go. All right, turn the board over and do the other side. end grain. Really, really soaking into this end grain. I think I'm going to have to give this end grain maybe four coats and the long grain maybe a couple of coats. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, what I'm going to do now, you get the uh, idea of putting this on. I'm seeing the colours pop. I'm going to do the rest off camera. And then I'll leave a couple of photographs at the end of the, uh, at the, the, end of the video. I'll leave the finished product guys. Nice cutting board made out of uh, walnut and maple. It's my first project. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, I want to give a shout out to Mark Christopher. Uh, I was watching uh, one of his videos and he gave some really good tips on uh, how to keep your pen bushings together and how to identify your pen bushings and um, I also told him I was going to make a YouTube video and asked him for some tips on that. He gave me some tips and also subscribed to my channel so that he wouldn't miss my video. Thank you very much for that Mark. Okay guys, I'll leave some photographs of this board up at the end of the video. If you like the channel, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Uh, anything you want, just leave in the comments uh, below. Um, I'll also leave a link to Mark Christopher's channel in my comments below and uh, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Thank you very much for watching.